I see a, a grown man dressed up as a lady um, rubbing his crotch in front of a prepubescent child, I have a real problem with that. Why are you coming to a kid's event? Why are you hosting drag queen kids? In America's deep south, there is deep division. A fight has broken out between conservative Christians and drag queens. We want to just live, thrive, and exist like every other normal individual. A culture war over queer rights and whether kids should be able to watch drag in public. They are sexual in nature and children should not be there. With at least 15 states having filed bills on banning drag, the queens are fighting for their rights in America. Please don't vote for somebody that would be against me doing what I do. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now. Tennessee, the home of Dolly Parton, country music, and now the first state to pass a so-called drag ban. The bill makes performing drag in public places or in front of kids a crime. This ban is just one aspect. So far, more than 400 anti-LGBTQ plus laws have been introduced across America this year alone. A record high, and the queer community say a new low as they see their rights being rowed back. I'm touring the Deep South to find out why drag itself is at the heart of the country's culture war. Nice yeah, to meet you. How's it going? Good. good First good, stop, good. Charlotte, North Carolina, where Karen Affection is preparing for a drag event which could soon be illegal in this state. That's a very deep purple you're going for there. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. How the, That's this particularly is, brave. Yeah, we're going to see how this plays out. In a sign of the times, she's had to be escorted into the venue today for her own safety. You've got security on the door today. I mean, yes. they kind of usher you in. Um, so security for any entertainer who does this, there's an escort to bring us from our car inside. Sometimes uh, they will bring us up to the door and park our cars for us away so people don't know what we're driving. But this isn't your usual drag show. This is Drag Queen Story Hour. Hello, how are you? Good. Good? We're gonna get started with Just Try One Bite. And this is a story about children making their parents try one bite. Oh, I know. See? Something like this is what we didn't get when I was a young child, figuring out that I was different. This is what I needed when I was that six-year-old little boy who knew I was different but didn't know why. Eating for lunch a whole jar of mayonnaise. Ew. Spoonful of and eat it. Yes. <laughs> it's events like this for kids that have lit the spark against drag performances in America. They've become such a target that it's not uncommon for our militia men to show up. Our queen tells me that the anti-drag laws are getting to her. Having our passion taken away from us is without anyone attempting to even listen to the human beings behind this vitriol that they have is, I don't even want to say offensive, it, it's, it's dehumanizing. Everybody look at your parents and say, we want ice cream. We want ice cream! Outside, the security team is keeping watch. Hello. They're normally camped at abortion clinics, shielding people from protesters there. But today, after getting the Queen into the building, they stick around to protect the families attending. We're here to make sure that these people feel safe, um, that they feel surrounded in safety, and that you know the ne'er-do-wells aren't going to be able to get to them, not through us. Tony may be out here today, but he used to be on the other side of the debate. I would have been out there with them in my early 20s. I, I, it's, I was so stern in my belief and thankfully, you know, I matured and had an evolution in my mid to late 20s. It was like, what am I doing? That's really high. Oh, there you go. <laughs> There's a huge mischaracterization of what goes on here. They act like it's a sex show in here. <laughs> it's little kids being read to by someone in costume. 
While this story hour did go ahead, across the country, tensions are ramping up. We were on our way to Louisville in Kentucky. We we're supposed to go to a drag story hour, but the organizers have had to call the whole thing off. They've had death threats, they've had hate mail, and understandably, they just feel it's not safe to continue. So it kind of feels like everything's taken a very sinister turn. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now. Why are you coming to a kid's event? Why are you hosting Drag Queen Kids? This was the event that shook the team at Drag Queen Storytime Kentucky into cancelling their next show. The usual protesters showed up, but they also received a bomb threat just minutes before the drag queen was about to start. Jamie was one of the organisers. We didn't want to create mass panic and say there's a bomb, um, so we just said there was a safety concern and asked them to evacuate. Um, as people were moving out, cops were showing up, and it kind of, like, you can't really hide the bomb squad showing up. A bunch of families just, like, right along that wall right there were just crying. The threat said that they had eyes on the property, and if we didn't do what they were telling us to do, that they would detonate the bomb. Um, so, yeah, it was very nerve-wracking. After the bomb squad left the building and declared the threat a hoax, the show did in fact go on. We're back in Tennessee and story hours won't go on. They're about to become illegal. Pro-drag campaigners say the issue is that many lawmakers have never actually been to drag shows or story hours and dismiss the arguments in favour of them. Hello, Tim. Yes, ma'am. Great to meet you. How's it going? Tell me your name. Minnie. Lovely Minnie. to meet Tim you. Tim Burchett. Oh, a fist bump. Yes, Tim Burchett is a conservative Republican who claims to not take himself too seriously. He's voiced his support for the drag ban in Tennessee. I was raised by two fine Christian folks. You know, when I see a, a grown man dressed up as a lady, um, rubbing his crotch in front of a prepubescent child, I have a real problem with that. But there is a difference, isn't there, between adult drag performers and drag story hours, you know, drag queens going into libraries. I, I, and reading. I don't care what adults do as long as it doesn't hurt me or raise my taxes. Um, and if they want to do that within the, the confines of their home, that's, that's quite all right. Just don't do it in front of my family. In this divisive culture war, some can't see why many conservative Republicans like Tim are so keen to legislate against drag performers when they won't do anything about the biggest killer of children in the US, guns. OK, let me ask you this. How many people have died at drag story hours in the US? I have no idea, ma'am. I don't... While we wait till somebody... Uh, that's not the issue of people dying at drag, at drag shows. Well, exactly. Although we did have a transgender person murder six people in Nashville this past weekend. We've was... had all kinds of people murdering people in the US, as you know and I know, but there have been no people that have died at drag shows, at drag story hours specifically. How many people have been killed at school shootings this have, year alone? I have no idea, ma'am. Well, I can tell you this year alone, it's 74 killed or injured at a school shooting. Lost, we lost 100 people yesterday in automobile accidents. But isn't that nobody's the big, one? And, you know, isn't that the bigger issue though? Here aren't guns the bigger evil here than just you know the odd drag story hour? Well, the same rock that Cain used to kill Abel is the same rock that um, you know David slew Goliath with. So I don't think the rock is the problem. I think it's we have a sick, sick country, and we need a revival. We need a true religious awakening. We went to a vigil for the six that were killed in Nashville that Tim and I spoke about. And I couldn't help them. Since our conversation, the number of people killed or injured in school shootings has now risen to over 100. The way the Tennessee drag bill is worded is vague, but its main aim is to block performances in front of children. So this drag brunch in Nashville doesn't breach the law because it's age restricted and on private property. But if a child were to peek through the big windows, that could be a problem. People from all across the state come to this. It's a lot of fun. I love the performances, the costumes, the makeup, the hair, I love all of it. 
We've come to meet seasoned host and activist Veronica Electronica as she gets ready for today. So Veronica, can I, can I ask how long the routine usually takes? I like to have at least two hours. Veronica believes the so-called drag ban is not just an attack on queens. It's not about drag. It's about LGBTQ identities and it's about LGBTQ advancing equality. And LGBT people seem to be that hot button right now. A couple of years ago, it was immigrants, right? They have used the LGBT um, minority in this country and made a huge issue about it under the guise of protecting the children. Fantastic. Speaking to Veronica, it's clear that this isn't just about drag. She's fighting to protect herself and her friends from losing their rights to do what they love, but also to exist freely. I speak with and I challenge my, my fans and, my, and, and the people that come to my shows. I say, I'll take your tip, I'll take your applause, and I'll take your admiration in the, in the photos with you, but when you go to vote, Please don't vote for somebody that would be against me doing what I do. Since we've been out here, there's been some good news for the Queens, if you can call it that. A theatre group has filed a lawsuit and managed to get a temporary block on the Tennessee drag ban until the end of May. But after that, the future is unclear. Dog. Hello, Hi. how's it Welcome going? Welcome to Tennessee. Lovely to meet yeah, you. Come on in. Hi, Robin. Hi, and this who's is this? Piper. Hi, Piper. For those on the other Hi, side, it's not just about drag either. They see drag artists as one element of the over sexualization of kids across the country. Some parents feel like their children are being exposed to harmful adult content wherever they go. Kinks, fantasies, and porn. This looks very rude. <laughs> the vulva and friends. Don't forget this paragraph about the anus. It's also chock full of sensitive nerves, making it a primo erogenous zone for touching and penetrating. All before mm -hmm. lunchtime. All before lunch, that's this right. Just... Robin Steenman is from Mums for Liberty, a nationwide group who wants to have more control over what their kids are taught. She's showing us Let's Talk About It, a book that is available in some libraries in the US. But she worries this book and others like it could end up in schools and that the education system is indoctrinating children into gender dysphoria. But sex education today has really been hijacked in our country to the point of, I mean, it pushes uh, not just LGBTQ narratives, but it encourages experimentation, it encourages multiple oh, partners. Mommy. And when you say it pushes this LGBT narrative, what, what, what do you mean by that? What, what is that narrative? That all the sex education has um, large sections of them de dedicated towards LGBTQ and pushing it as a, a positive and, and thing that kids should try. And You don't think that obviously there are some, some people who, in that classroom who, who might be gay? They might be, but kids are also impressionable. I wonder what you think about drag performances being banned in Tennessee, in public, in front of kids. What, what's your take on it? My take on all of it in general is it's the sexualization of children, which we're against. What is the worry with, with the drag story hour stuff? Because some people say, you know, there's nothing sexy or provocative about, about reading a book in a kid's library. They're not particularly there, sexualized. No but you're, what's your that, thought? That we're pushing gender ideology on children as young as kindergarten, as the youngest preschool. And drag story, I was a part of that. I'm optimistic that we can make change and we can save the country, that we can save the kids. But it's not just conservative mums who are speaking out. There are some from within the gay community who also aren't happy. I did get permission to go up on the street and do street interviews and ask people what they think about like kids at drag shows. Cool. So. Hi Mickey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Mickey Cutler is from a group called Gays Against Groomers. They claim to be, in their words, an organisation of gays against the sexualization, indoctrination and medicalization of children under the guise of LGBTQIA+. We met her chatting to a friend about upcoming events. Yeah, so this basically just goes over 
what the organization is about as well. Mickey as says children are. shouldn't even be at pride events and doesn't think drag is for kids. Some of them are in very inappropriate clothing or very little clothing at all, dancing inappropriately, swinging from swings attached to the ceilings, singing. They're very... not doing that in public libraries, are they? In public libraries, let's be honest, they're reading, they're reading children's books to kids in a library. Mm -hmm. That's not maybe like at night time. There's some more risque stuff that goes on, but in the in the in the day, what is is that sexy? Kind of you know, is that is that a worry? Reading books in a library is that? Tell me, you what you think about it? I mean, we were uh, on the topic of dragon. Like during the day, we are seeing this stuff happen in front of kids. Um, we're seeing a lot of targeting of children, not only in public spaces with like child-friendly drag shows. I say that with full quotes because they they are sexual in nature, and children should not be there. Do you ever think we need to turn the language down, or, or is that something you've decided that, that is important? I think this organization um, has made it abundantly clear that we need to use the language that's going to make people uncomfortable because we need to get this message out there. And people aren't going to listen until you kind of have to shock them. Like when we're talking about children transitioning, we use the words child mutilation because people go, whoa, that's a, that's a very big, it's a big word. Trans people would say that that's very transphobic. What would you say to them? Children should be allowed to figure out who they are. A child can't get a tattoo. A child cannot join the military. They can't even drive a car. And if they can't even do these things, why should a 13-year-old be given the right to have a double mastectomy, something that you can't reverse? So you're a proud gay woman, mm -hmm. but you don't want the pride flag in schools? No. I, there's a to me there's oh, yeah. a, dis there's yeah. a disconnect there but, but but talk me through it so children do not need to be worrying about their sexualities they go to school to get an education you know it's not a teacher's place to teach their students about sexualities and transgender and this and that at the end of the day the goal is to see children protected it's to see kids being able to be kids again The one, the only, Miss Fantasia Bordeaux! At a small gay bar in Memphis, we meet Fantasia Bordeaux. Fantasia calls herself a veteran queen. She's been on the scene for some 30 years. This is an art form where you can express anything that you want to. It's always been an artistic outlet for me. I've enjoyed being able to bring some of the things I've only dreamt about to life. Give it up for Fantasia Bordeaux! Fantasia, you look amazing. Hey, how are you? I'm Thank good. You. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm a little nervous. But no, really? Ready. Fantasia's a drag artist and a trans woman. She's felt the mood shift against her art form, but also her identity recently. Do, do you think it's a, a difficult time for trans women in the south of America? Do you think it's a safe place? Uh, at the moment, no. You know, with the bills that have come through, inciting a lot of hate and violence, putting us under the microscope for people just to analyze who we are, how we live, you know. We're trying to have a normal existence. We want to just live, thrive, and exist like every other normal individual. Everything's questionable now. You know, what other rights are they going to try to take away? To try to speak to younger LGBTQ individuals. It's kind of sad because you almost cannot assure them of better days. Tammy is kind of famous on this block, the manager of Drew's Place, a staple on the Memphis gay scene for over 15 years. I like to be outside. You're a woman of the people, I feel that about you. But after a rise in homophobic hate crime, she's had to hire in armed security to man the doors. You've had to kind of up security in the last few years. We did that as a result of the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando. That's when we made a lot of changes. We, ended, we hired a security service, uh, so we have armed security, uh, especially on the weekend nights. There's so many guns in America. It is, it's, it's so beyond ridiculous. And that's coming from someone, I'm a gun owner. And, um, but there, it's just, it's so out of control. And, 
you know, something's got to be done about that. But <laughs> I don't know if it's ever going to happen, honestly. But for now, you need your armed guards on the on, yeah on the bar. Yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't do me any good to have an unarmed guard. Um, you know, if something did happen, all it would do is get them killed. So because the other person's going to have a gun. It's a very sobering thought. Yeah, it is. The next day, we're back at the bar to meet some of Fantasia's friends from the queer scene. She's keen for us to hear directly from the people these bills are affecting. The reason I'm with this group of individuals here is because they personify being vigilant and not afraid. I'm starting to get the sense that Fantasia and her friends feel constantly on edge. Minutes into our interview, Moth starts to feel unsafe. Um, I'm just going to check the door. Just to, sure, yeah. sure. Sorry, I'm having a lot of trouble focusing. You're good. Yeah, sure. You're just worried that it's, that it's, that it's not locked, right? And do you feel less safe since, since this bill has come in? Yeah, I think so. I think it is a lot less safe in general because now you have people who are actively targeting and looking for reasons to become reactive. I'm getting threats online of people to, lots of people call me sick or mentally ill, you know, the groomer slur. The lawmakers who brought in Tennessee's so-called drag ban say that it's not targeting any groups of people, but as a trans woman, Jenna feels it's a cover for a larger anti-trans agenda. Because I present feminine and as a woman, are they going to arrest me walking down the street and try to label me as a female impersonator instead of a trans woman? Um, and so they're, they're using the drag community to push their agenda and to attack um, the trans community. It's clear they're worried, but the ban isn't just about them. They want everyone to help in the fight back. We need the support of the entire community, not just the LGBTQ+. We need voices as loud as, you know, they can go so that we can tell these legislators that, you know, we're not going to let it go down like that. We've been here for a couple of weeks now, and actually, interestingly, everybody we've spoken to, whichever the camp they're in, feels the same in a way. They feel like they're not being listened to, that their rights are being chipped away at. And you get the sense that neither side is backing down, which makes it hard to see where this is going. But also you get the feeling that this is way bigger than just the drag ban. This is about people trying to be themselves. And for some people, that just feels impossible.